her mother singing with her. That's mother and daughter presentation. I thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we do. We thank you for this day as you provide for us the sensitivity that through this celebration that it will provide healing and that it would minister grace. Now, Lord, anoint our ears. Let us hear words that will cause and make a change and a difference in our lives. We praise you for it now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us today is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Today, we celebrate the wonderful gift of motherhood and the important role that mothers play in our lives. It's a day to honor and to show appreciation to our mothers for all that they have done and all that they continue to do for us. In today's message, I want to explore the biblical basis for honoring our mothers and the importance of respecting them. The Bible teaches us that we should honor our mothers. And in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, he says, Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So this commandment under the law is not only a moral obligation, but it also comes with the promise of blessings. Uh, in, under the law, when this commandment was given, it was the only one that had with it blessings. God promises long life to those who honor their parents. And honor is defined as showing esteem for one or the one who deserves it, showing esteem. It, it's a word that means to show respect, to give attention to. The word even goes so far as to say when you honor somebody, you, you, you give them priority above everything else. You give them a place of priority and a place of value. So honor is, is serious business. Now, traditionally, to show you how serious honor was, there was such punishment that was dealt to children, adult children mostly, who would not walk in the honor of a mother or a father. What they would do back in the day <laughs> is that the whole neighborhood, like if you lived in the neighborhood, the whole neighborhood would come and get that dishonorable child and they would drag them to the front of the neighborhood, and all of the neighbors would stone the child to death. Thank God we're not under the law. There'd be some stoning going on right now. Thank God we're not under the law, but this is just to show you how serious it was. Look at Matthew 15 and 4, just standing in this vein to show you how serious it was and then show you how things uh, have been adjusted a little bit. Matthew 15, 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth, not cussing, but he that curses the father or mother, let him die the death. I'm like, whoa! In any dispensation, this would be serious. And then Proverbs chapter 30, verse 17, look at this. Proverbs 30 and 17 he says, the eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall, shall pick it out, and the young e eagle shall eat it. Dang. <laughs> it was serious business, right? 
The way we respect our parents says a lot about how we respect God. That's why it was so serious. The way we respect our parents, especially our mothers, says a lot about how we respect God. And it was so serious back then because the actions of dishonor disrupted family multiplication and expansion. And so, unfortunately, the reality is that not all parents treat their children well. We understand that. Sometimes parents' behavior can be unhealthy and harmful to their kids. We understand that. But the Bible instructs us to honor our parents, but it does not command us to stay in harm's way. But the way those commandments to honor God, when you see those commandments to honor God or to honor your parents, most of that was aimed at adult children and not so much young children. Young children, most of that is like obeying your, 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 your mother and father as a kid. But we're talking about them grown-up children now. He said there's a level of honor that you should walk in and understand that you should do this until your parents leave the earth. In some nations of the world, you would receive a seven-prison, a seven-year prison term for being unemployed too long and not taking care of your parents. Might ought to bring that law on over here. <laughs> Look at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 8 through 9. Proverbs, so it was, it was a very serious thing in the mind of God. Proverbs 1, verse 8 says, My son, hear the instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. So Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, understood the importance of a mother's teaching and instruction. A mother's guidance is like a beautiful garland that adorns her child and a precious necklace that, en that enhances their beauty. Notice here now in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, and today I'm going to share some practical things because I, I, I just think we need practicality in order, all right, so what do I do from this point? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, Paul, in his letter to the, to, to the Ephesians, reminds us that honoring our parents is not just a suggestion. It's a command, and it's a command out of love. And by honoring our mothers, we are not only pleasing God. We are pleasing God when we honor our mothers, but we are also setting ourselves up for blessings in our own life. So it's twofold. You're pleasing God when you do that, and... The, the blessing honor is still available to you even under this covenant of grace. Look what he says, Ephesians 6, verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, uh, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So it, we're not talking about just something uh, that was under the law, but we're talking about something that is now a moral understanding, even under the commandment of the love of God. Let's give some examples. Throughout the Bible, there are many examples of mothers who placed important roles in their lives, in the lives of their children. One of those examples is a woman by the name of Hannah. Hannah was the mother of Samuel. And in Samuel chapter 1, you can read that, uh, it, it talks about Hannah prayed for a child and how God answered her prayer by giving her a son. And then Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord and raised him up to become a great prophet. So Hannah's example teaches us the importance of prayer and dedication in the area of motherhood. She prayed for a child and dedicated that child to the Lord. And let me say this to every mother. If you have dedicated your children to the Lord, you should not be carrying that care to bed every night. God got them. 
I said, if you've dedicated your child to the Lord, don't be moved by what it looks like. God got them. God got them. He will raise them up. They will fulfill the will of God for their life. They can act like a hellion if they want to, but I tell you, when you dedicate them to the Lord, they might run, but they can't hide. God will find them. You're going to be all right. And don't let, don't let, don't let, uh, uh, don't let your children shame you as a mother. Don't let them shame you. Well, you should have did that. You should have did that. Hold up. Put a little pen there. Now, go have your baby and then come back and talk to me later. <laughs> you've done, you've done all, you, you did all you knew to do for the time. All right? Somebody said, was it enough? Yes, it was enough because Jesus has committed to continuous education. You do what you know to do, and then you dedicate, you dedicate them to the Lord. You give them to God and let God do whatever you didn't do. And when they pull that stuff out about you, did, you didn't do this, and you didn't do that, and you didn't do that, you just say, you know what, did all I needed to do, but now this is why you need to get saved so that Jesus can finish the work. But don't you walk around in shame. Isn't it amazing how they can tell you how you ought to be a parent? And they ain't got child, ain't got child yet. You, the, the carrying a child for nine months and then birthing the child out of your body, put, spitting out a whole human being. <laughs> well, my mama didn't want to see me right away, and that, that messed me up a lot. I wouldn't want to see you eat all that pain I just had went through. You done... Give, give me a time. Hold on. I'm going to get to you. <laughs> Let me take in what just happened here. I just pushed out an entire human being. I'm going to tell you, if it was up to men to have babies, the earth would be empty. <laughs> oh, no, why are they trying to do this campaign about men can have babies too? What man want to do that? You know how much courage it takes? Well, a woman's a, I don't care how adaptable your body is, that thing hurt. That hurt. Every child ought to be apologizing to his mama. Mama, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you got a big head, you need to get on your knees and apologize. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. It's just. <laughs> Another example is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Think of that. The mother of Jesus was chosen by God to be the mother of our Savior, and she accepted this calling with humility and obedience. And Mary's example teaches us the importance of obedience and trust in God's plan for our lives. I mean, what are you going to teach God? I've got to trust him. And so there's some practical things I want to bring to your attention today, some practical things that you can do to show honor to your mother. You know, normally I would take the attitude of, you know, it depends on what the series we're on. Oh, uh, well, you know, we'll just celebrate Mother's Day and then I'm going to just pick up preaching for where I am. But I'm realizing the older I get, it is important to, to single these precious celebrations aside you need to be appreciated. You need to be celebrated. And your church needs to get behind the celebration to value motherhood. And so, some practical ways to show it. Number one, make your mother look good. Somebody said, how you do that? By simply being a good person. Don't, don't be out there acting crazy and, and make, embarrassing your mama. Make your mother look good. People will make the connection. Make her look good. Make her smile. You know, it used to be some folks would hold up and say, I'm not going to do that. Why? My mama. There's some basketball players on, 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 on TV when they're playing basketball would go crazy, but they think, my, that mama, mama, mama going to call me. Don't embarrass me. You remember when you, I never could remember this. You remember when your mama say, boy, uh, 
you got them underwear on, they got holes all in it. What if you got to go to the hospital and you got them things on embarrassing me? Never could get that, but make her look good. <laughs> Number two, let them know you understand what you have, what they have done for you. Pick a time where you, you understand, I know what you've you done for me, Mom. I know you've been praying for me every day. I know that, and I thank you. If there's an area that you become aware of, let them know, I know, and I thank you. I know you've been patient with me, and I thank you. I know I disappointed you here, but you didn't give up on me, and I thank you. Number three, provide the gift of your presence. Provide the gift of your presence by visiting and listening to their stories. You, 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 you'll learn something. <laughs> uh, I was with my, my family a couple of weeks ago, and I learned a lot. I walked out of the house, I said, God, dog, I learned a lot. <laughs> the gift of your presence. Number four, and here's a big one. You honor them by not expecting them to bail you out. Uh-oh, been funny so far. <laughs> Work hard to avoid dishonoring your parents by looking for, uh, by not looking for a bailout. Work hard to avoid dishonoring your parents. Like it or not, your debt reflects negatively on them. Think about that now. Hey, what you going to do when they leave? You ain't got your stuff together yet that you still going to your mama to bail you out? Yeah, mama, I know, but, 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 but get your butt out of the way and figure out how to live a life where you will stop trying to buy stuff to impress somebody who don't care and putting it, putting it on your mother. That's dishonorable. They spent all their life raising you. Seem like it's your time to give back to one who has given so much to you. Number five, it got quiet in here on that one, didn't it? <laughs> don't, be wait, don't be waiting for your mama to die for your prosperity. Y'all, you, you act like you don't understand what I'm saying. I tell my kids, don't, don't be waiting for me to, and your mama to die and for you to prosper. We try not to leave nothing. <laughs> We're trying to spend every dime. We're not. That's why I don't want you to make, make me no soup right now because you, you too, you're too excited about. You better get a job. You better figure out how to prosper on your own. Don't figure out. You might be, you might be tricked. You might be expecting something that ain't going to be there when I'm leaving. <laughs> Amen. I think this is number five. Pick up the tab once in a while. It means the world to your mom when you at least try. All your life, you've gone out somewhere, and she's always picked the tab up and paid it. You pick it up. You grown. You're an adult. When you take your mama somewhere, pick the tab up. Don't be looking at her and say, well, uh, <laughs> I would pay for it, but I ain't got but $5. Well, why you ask her out? You're going to ask her out and then look for her to pick the tab up. That's dishonorable. That's not honorable. If you can't afford to go to a restaurant, invite her over and cook. And if you can't cook, ask somebody in your relatives that can cook. But don't do that. <laughs> Number six. I mean, I like the way Taffy did. Boy, Taffy was like, she get up, look around, she say, you pay this. <laughs> I 
And they were like, uh-huh. Huh, you pay this. I'm waiting in the car. Because <laughs> I ain't going back to the kitchen and washing no dishes. You, if any gone, well, you going to wash the dishes. That's, it's, it's dishonorable for that. Number six, show a positive regard for parents through your words and your behaviors, a regard for them. I regard my mother through my words and my behavior. Number seven, in the Old Testament, grown children would provide care, they would provide time, and they would provide financial support if needed. This was the culture's version of Social Security. They didn't have it back then. And there are some adult children who just look to take the Social Security from. El elderly people are not being honored in this country the way that they should be honored. And it, it's something we have to change. There is no way your mom ought to be working on her third retirement because you can't seem to get it together. And a word of advice to, your mo to, to mothers, don't be going in and rescuing a grown man who ought to be, he, he 50 years old, don't be going in and rescuing him. <laughs> well, I'm a mama, I just don't want him to be homeless. Let that butt uh, sleep outside a couple of times on the curb. He'll be, he'll be a lot, lot thankful for whatever job he can get to do what needs to be done. And like I'm telling you, it's not hard. It's an it's a issue of mathematics. How you want to live and how much you making. It's real simple. Now, when you look at how much you want to live and it costs this much, and you look at how much you're making and you're making this much, what you're making is not enough to take care of how you're living. So you're going to have to either reduce how you're living or increase how much you're making. It's real simple. You know, it, it, it don't even take the Holy Ghost helping you to figure that out. That's simple math. That means you can't live in an apartment that costs $3,000 a month and you ain't making but $1,200 a month. <laughs> well, where you gonna live at at that price? I don't know, you might have to rent a room or buy a tent, but that's your problem. You gotta figure that out. I'm too real, I need to go and hurry up with this sermon. <laughs> and then you, you, you crying the loudest at the funeral. Mama! <laughs> and one of the rebels want to get you, just choke you out, and you know. <laughs> it's not that hard, it's not that difficult. What happens is we let the pride of life enter in, and we busy trying to show off, acting like we, what, what we're not. You, be, you better get that used 1970 Pinto. It got a good motor in it. It'll get you to working back. See, you're not, you're not stuck there. You're just passing through right now. You do what you can do until you can do better. And then you work hard here, and then you work on getting some education, and you work on getting something so you can get a promotion to make more money. It's real simple, and you are where you are because you made a decision to stay that way. It's real simple. You ain't the only one that had to start there. There's a starting line, and you got to respect what you got to do at the starting line to do what you need to do. And most of the time, it is you've got to lower your standard of how you think you ought to live and what you think you ought to have. You might not be able to wear no Michael Jordans right now. You just got to go back to All-Star. You understand? <laughs> Get them cloth tennis shoes where you can throw them in a washing machine and clear. <laughs> I mean, who you, who, you, who, you, who you showing out for? Why are you perpetrating and barring some? I mean, the authentic you, nobody knows because you have put on this fake trying to be something you're not. That's what's costing you. And then not respecting money. You get a raise and then you get into hyperconsumption, and before you can even appreciate the raise, you've already found a way to spend it. And you create debt. It ain't that hard. Your mama ought to be enjoying her life. Yeah. 50 years old and you want somebody to take care of you? Shoot, I wish I was your mama, yours. We'll learn something that day. 
because you love the babies, you know you love them, but are you crippling them? Well, if you ain't gonna help me out, then I'm gonna go and sell drugs. You gonna go to jail, not me, boy, you ain't hurt me. You not hurt me. You think you hurt me because you decided to do something stupid? But you gotta be careful, Mom. You, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't buy that. Devote them to God, love them, pray for them. I ain't trying to die early. But I guarantee you, you let them stress you out and get you to that point, that's your fault. Huh? Well, that's my kid, and say what you want to say, but I'm going to give them everything they want. I don't care if they 65. <laughs> and we'll have a double funeral. <laughs> Nobody ever considers that. What happened? Why did they die? No honor towards their mother. You, you don't consider that. And the Bible is real clear about that. Nobody ever even calculates the fact that this might have happened because you've refused to walk in honor. But God loves you. You're under the grace of God. He's going to keep doing everything he know to do to try to help you out. But sometimes you keep setting yourself up for the worst possible scenario. And it doesn't have to be like that. Number seven, eight, excuse me. Is it seven? <laughs> I don't know, y'all help me. <laughs> like, you got the notes? Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to hurry and get out of here before somebody start trying to stone me. <laughs> Number seven, again, was the, the Old Testament, grown children would promote care, time, and financial support if needed. And this was the culture uh, and their version of Social Security back there. Number eight, they refrain from dishonoring their parents. You have to refrain from dishonoring your parents, and therefore, they're, they're, let me give you a couple of ways to, to do that. If you, you will honor them by refraining from dishonor ring them. In other words, to treat your mom, number one, as if she is insignificant is dishonoring. They get no honor if you treat her like she is insignificant. That's dishonorable. Number two, second part of this, to strike, hit, abuse, or be cruel to your mother is dishonoring. It is a dishonoring thing, but I have counseled people who have come to me because their children are striking them, hitting them. And I know you think it's ridiculous, but there are mothers who are being physically abused by their children. That's so dishonoring. I'm telling y'all, we need to get that department together. What department? That whoop your tail department. They just call the church right quick and say, hey, could I have the whoop your tail department? <laughs> Strike and hit and abuse and be cruel to a mother who delivers you to the door for the very existence that you have. At least to say that is very dishonoring. The next one, to curse your mother, not cuss her. That's not good either. But to curse your mother is like pronouncing condemnation and wishing some sort of evil would harm, would, uh, would harm or destroy them. It's literally cursing her with the words of your mouth, wishing something ill that would come upon them. That acts like a boomerang 
and it actually comes back on you. The day that we have chosen to celebrate and to honor our mothers, it is a serious occasion, more serious than what I've ever thought it was. It is an occasion that we all have an opportunity to evaluate just where we are, not to promote fear and say to you, well, you know, if you've done any of these things, you're going to hell. No, there's a, there's a grace that's available to help you to improve no matter where you are today. And God loves you, but you can't do no better until you know better. And maybe by bringing some things to your attention, we can promote a community that brings honor, recognition, and value to mothers that are getting older, that we respect them and honor them and love them and do all kinds of things that we can make their latter days much better than their former days. And so, another good thing about Mother's Day is that the sermons are always going to be short. <laughs> See if we can get you out here so you can beat the restaurant rush <laughs> and be inspired to join us next year for Mother's Day. <laughs> let go to the on them church. You don't preach but 30 minutes, boy. Let, let go there. <laughs> for every mother in here, I offer a prayer of blessings to you right now. And I declare that the Spirit of God will remove every burden, glory to God, and destroy every yoke. That the Spirit of God will take that heaviness maybe and make it light. May your latter days be greater than your former days. And may your children be grace and peace unto you, joy unto you, and comfort. May this day of celebrating motherhood be extended to you as a gift of confirmation and love for the role that you have played and are playing even today. Blessings upon you now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Would you give the Lord a big hand clap for praise? Amen. Would you stand for the final blessing? Thank you so much for joining us today. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, that somehow you can take something out of this today and leave this place to intentionally honor your mother this day. For those of you who are here and not born again, you may simply come to this altar and it will be our pleasure to escort you to a place where you can make Jesus the Lord of your life. Whatever you want to do at this altar, you are welcome today. You want to get saved, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever it may be, you can come today. Amen. If you can follow this gentleman right here. Well, okay, I'll wait a little bit more, okay. Just, just hold up just a moment. Hold up just a minute.
all is well. All is well. Amen. We good? Anybody else? Okay, come on. I tell you what, God's grace is sufficient, isn't it? Amen. And the word for today is no matter where you are, his grace is all you need. He's not quit on you. He's not mad at you. He's not condemning you. He loves you enough that hopefully, as I was speaking, he was saying something to you. And everything's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. This thing going to work out because of the grace and the power of God in your life. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. Amen. Well, praise God. So we're going to lead you to a prayer room. Prayer room counselors upstairs going to pray with you. And the best is yet to come. Amen. If you'll follow this gentleman right now to the prayer room, they're going to take you upstairs. We appreciate you, love you. Amen. And now may the power of God's grace be with you all. May God do exceptional things in your life and open doors that were closed to you at one time. I declare the blessing over your life increase over your life, divine protection over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus over your family, over your children, over your relationships. I plead the blood of Jesus in your going in and your arriving back at home that no tragedy, no hurt, no shooting will snatch your life from you, for with long life you have been satisfied, and he will show you magnificent salvation. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, everybody. Happy Mother's Day.